In a world where COVID-19 has ridden the planet, three dweebs make a podcast about stuff that everyone else has already talked about. Then, in a foreseeable turn of events, one traveler left behind, two marched forward. To talk to you guys this week about the differences between homebrew and pre-written campaigns. Nice. Welcome to Traveler's Tips and Tales. I'm Ben. And, and I'm Jake. And today, Traveler Mike could not join us. Why do you make it sound like he's dead? <laughs> <laughs> One Traveler left behind, two marched forward? I mean, like... The show must go on. <laughs> oh, jeez. Did, did something happen to Mike and I don't know about this? Welcome to Traveler's <laughs> Tips and Tales. <laughs> Broken record. Oh goodness. Um, well. Welcome. Well. 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 well, 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 uh. <laughs> well. Oh, for real though. Uh, welcome. My name is Ben. And I'm Jake. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And today we're talking about homebrew uh, versus pre-written campaigns. The pros. The cons. Why you would want to do one or the other. In case we have any DMs out there that are wondering, you know, they want to get their, they want to start playing D and D, and maybe they're the unfortunate soul that wants to start playing D and D the most. So the rest of the group has <laughs> deemed them the DM, um, which definitely yeah. happens. I know a lot. Uh, yeah. Didn't happen to me, but uh, <laughs> or like if a you're a player bullet. with a plethora of DMs to choose from, and you're trying to figure out which game you would be interested in joining. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have we have today our DM's outlook, cough cough Ben, and we have today our player outlook, which is me. And also technically, I have written or I have not I have not written a pre-written campaign. Oh dear no, um, I have <laughs> ran. I mean like uh, ten maybe fifteen sessions of a pre-written, and Ben has ran like over two hundred probably <laughs> long sessions of homebrew so we have a uh, we have a bit of experience Not i'd say about have. equal experience each probably you know i'm so curious so i've been i'm gonna do some quick maths okay um let's say for the times that we couldn't play i used to dm like way more than once a week so i'm gonna say average of once a week all right and i've been listen, playing since listen like, dude i've Cade has been in your world for like over two years now. Yeah, and it's been three and, and a half played years before that. Yeah, so, so it's like fifty games per year. Yeah, roughly. fifty-two games a year times three point five. Yeah, it's about one hundred and eighty-two sessions. If I if that is correct, back. I would say I would say there's probably or a couple more. extra in there because you're also counting like one shots, which you still run in pre-written or not in pre-written. You still run one shots in homebrew worlds. Yeah, it's true. I used to run other stuff like every day when, mm -hmm. when I first got out of high school. I used to run literally every single day because we were just like we have nothing better to do than to play D and D for days. But that is unfortunately beside the point. Yes, you are very experienced, but. We have something to talk about today, which is pre-writtens versus homebrews. Yeah. And where... Okay, so before we start, where do your loyalties lie, Jake, with DMing versus playing in a game? Well, I kind of hate to say it, because I did run a pre-written campaign. I didn't enjoy it too much. I think I would enjoy a homebrew, a running a homebrew game even less, though, unfortunately, just because... Um, I can't get past the like the 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 preparation wall that you have to do. Um so uh for DMing I I think I prefer for me and how I DM and the way that I do things in my brain, I think I prefer pre written campaigns. But as a player I like homebrew yeah. more, I think. Well I don't dislike pre written's. I, as a rule, obviously, DMing, I prefer homebrew. Um, Makes sense. But this might shock you, actually. But playing in games, I sometimes prefer pre-written. Really? Because I'm a lore fanatic. And That's in pre-written games, I'm aware of all the lore already, sometimes mm -hmm. more than the person running it. 
Whereas in homebrew games, I'm constantly asking them about lore and they have no answers for it most of the time. <laughs> like, I'll be like, how does this work? How does this work? How does this work? Where did this come from? What is this? 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 And they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so sometimes I kind of do prefer playing in pre-written games. Just because I understand what's going on in the background of the world so my character can get more in-depth. Yeah. But that's kind of a weird side point. <laughs> like, that can yeah. be overcome through effort. <laughs> True. But yeah, so those are our two individual looks at the very start of it. And now we're going to talk about it, hopefully from a less biased uh, standpoint. From this point on. About what we think is the pros and the cons for each. Yeah. So which would you like to start on, Benjamin? I mean... Let's let's just let's just start with pre-written games. There's right. a whole lot of them. Yeah. Like literally you can pick from so many. <laughs> biggest biggest pro on my book here. Way less prep. You have to do you don't have to do nearly as much stuff for this. Yeah. Homebrew, you have to prep everything before the, like you have a mountain of prep work to do before your session 0. You know what I mean? Like, there is a lot to do. Well, pre-written, you have to read, like, maybe 10 pages, 15, 20 pages of the basics of the world that you're running in before you can start having a session zero so you can start talking with your players about what they want to do. Yeah, it is... There is a lot less prep involved. You kind of just have the... The, the pre-written's all come with, like, a campaign description, too, so mm -hmm. you can just say, hey, everybody, here's the campaign description. Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves, make your characters, and we'll start on this day. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's it. They just show up. Mm -hmm. um, also, with pre-written, you, yeah. you have a better idea about how long your campaign will last. Mm -hmm. So you can you can give your players, like, a an idea of, like, if you're a group like us, where we have a million games that we want to get to um most of ours are homebrew and that's the problem with the backup is that we have homebrew games and they're taking longer because we just keep playing the game rather than a pre-written where eventually there will be a point where there's no more stuff prepared like that's you've played through the book <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean like like, like you're done like there is a more finite end goal yeah, pre-written's are kind of like Attack on Titan is right now, where it's like, yeah, it's at the end. It's 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 towards the end. We're almost done. And then like homebrews like Dragon Ball, where it's like they had they made how many? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or yeah, One like, Piece, where it's just like he hasn't done what? What? We're still going? <laughs> like, what has this person not done yet? Well, you know, they haven't killed a lich per se. Yeah, like <laughs> they may have stopped someone from becoming a lich, but they never killed an already lich. No, yeah, but at this point, they're actually making a lich just so they can go kill the lich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, pre written so you have a better uh, idea about how long your campaign will last. Although uh, that's not always true. I guess some games with certain parties just take longer. <laughs> That something you gotta true. be prepared for. Our buddy of ours was running Storm Kings for like over a year, <laughs> and we finished it in about a month. <laughs> like, we, no, we finished it in like two months. Let's, two months, but he's been running here. it for over a year. Yeah, like pretty much for for like it's funny because me and Ben played in the short game, and neither of us were in the long game, whereas Mike was in the long game and not in the short game. But yeah. um, but like we. Me and you, like, we leveled up after, like, every session, I felt exactly. like. like, And they were just, like, crawling, crawling. Yeah, they decided to do every side quest. And we yeah. were just, like, main quest, main quest, main quest, main side quest, main quest, win. What is Yay. that? <laughs> yeah. Guys, we did it. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing you got to keep in mind with pre written There's certain side quests that are in the game, and sometimes there's not. You know, True. sometimes the game will just railroad you. Mm -hmm. and it's not because the game hates you but it's because you can only fit so much inside one book yeah that also includes all the npcs all the maps all the lore all the there's, everything so yeah there's gonna be points in the road where there could be technically a decision but the book only prepares you for one and yeah. that's just gonna happen or like rise of tiamat the book specifically states the party has to fail yeah. at certain points over and over and over and over again 
Otherwise, the, yeah. the book will never actually complete the story because Tiamat has to rise yeah. <laughs> in the rise of Tiamat for you in to order stop for, Tiamat. <laughs> in order for you to move on to the yeah. next book, you know, so... Yeah. Yeah, it could be tough sometimes like that. Yeah. But if you're okay with a more linear story, book campaigns are great. If you don't mind a little bit of railroading every now and then. I know yeah, my players I mean... rebel against every instance of railroading, so I could never... <laughs> <laughs> yeah every now and then Ben will be like here's this thing and we're just go we just look him straight in the eyes and we go no we're gonna walk along the streets until something finds us <laughs> like some other trouble finds us yeah. which is what we've literally done to him before but as another point <laughs> on that on that note you can break off of you know the train tracks every now and then and do a little bit on your own um, like pre written you don't have to run the book by the book every time. You can always break off and do a little bit of homebrew if you want, um, if you're comfortable. It's a lot but, easier to... Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. We can't I'm go just... hybrid... You can't go encouraging no, no, no. people to hybridize the no, two no, no, now. No, because it's, it's real easy <laughs> because you don't have to... You're still working within the confinedness yeah. of the book because you're still working within that world and whatnot. But you can do like a side quest that doesn't exactly exist but you can take a character that is already in the book that you've already rp'd and you already know that you didn't have to make on your own which is something that you would have done for homebrew and you can say this is a problem that this person would likely have and i'm going to make them have this problem and pitch it to the cat to the to the adventures and who knows maybe they'll bite and they'll go on this side quest that i technically homebrewed and it's another option for them to do and it's technically less railroading so you can break off the train tracks, in a sense, a little bit if you'd like, in that kind of sense. Yeah, there, there, <laughs> there is spaces in pre-written for a little bit of homebrew to spice things up. And that's honestly a mark of a good DM, is knowing when, that, when to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but on the opposite end, if you're running a pre-written, your DM is more likely to be a, probably a little bit less passionate. About what's in the book, maybe? That is true. This um, is the main problem with happened in my campaign. Is that... At the beginning of it, it looked cool. And we all we were all for it. And then, as we kept going, I, was, I just kind of stopped liking it a little bit, by the by. Slowly but surely. You know what I mean? Like, I just slowly got a lot less disinterested within my own game. Which really sucks because all of my characters, all of my players here, are really hype about their characters, and I love their characters, and I want to see them more, but I hate the fact that I have to be the one to run it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is to my, be fair, though, yeah. our characters wouldn't be the same if you weren't the DM, man. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, that campaign. I feel like we're never going to play again. I don't know. I might I might revive it, but like I don't know. I might do some like weird time BS. <laughs> or you can just you could just restart us, man. We're like, yeah, I might we're, just we're okay with that. We'll just always with that game, we'll never ever get anywhere near to finishing it, but we'll always just play the first five levels. Like <laughs> Just over and over. Once we hit to five, once we you reach the like the limit to hit six, you guys we just start over again. I hope not. <laughs> That'd be torture. I think I'd have to switch characters, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh. So the DM is uh, could be likely a lot less passionate about the material, whereas that is a lot less likely if the DM is you know writing it making it themselves. themselves because they're bound to be passionate about it and if they're not passionate about it then they change it it's just that simple yeah another con uh more reading for There's the players read. and for the dm because you have yeah. to be able to make a character in this world and rather than just being like hey dm what about this the, the dm will just be like go read it like, i don't care <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's already there, just go read the lore, and then they're like, Listen, oh, man, we're... I've read a lot of stuff in the last week. I don't feel like reading three or four more paragraphs for your character. <laughs> or exactly. Yeah. But then, also, you kind of have to be prepared if you're playing in a pre-written, to like, yeah, you know the lore, you gotta make character, it has to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, why are you playing? Yeah. You know? Like, you That's can't go off thing, the though. wall with homebrew and all this other stuff. 
that's another thing though characters are less incorporated into the world as a whole just yeah. from the very beginning because the setting itself does not accommodate for them um mm -hmm. it's just impossible to it, it physically yeah. can't the setting is already there and the characters come afterwards whereas with homebrew it's homebrew and you're the dm and so you can mold your world after you hear about the characters yes you have the the beginning that you started with especially with a world like yours ben where where we've done multiple campaigns in it right and we yep. and we move from one to the next with totally new characters yes there is already finite evidence and finite details that we already know but there's still stuff that you can shift a little bit like Amusil the city that my character Spade grew up in and was born in, that's like the Amusil that, that is to the Royal Flush is a totally different Amusil that was to Cade's party. Because Cade and them went to Amusil and they experienced Amusil, but it was a very different experience. And you could just write it off as a town in different eyes, right? Because, like, for me, as a player, as both of my characters going into that city, it's a totally different experience, but I'm okay with it because, like, with the finite little changes that you've done to the place, I'm okay with it because it's just stuff that Cade wouldn't have noticed or Spade omits from his memory, right? Because he doesn't think like that. It's his hometown, and so he has, like, that special, like, feeling in his heart where he, like, doesn't want to hate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so it kind of works like that better, whereas, you know, you could mold it like clay, whereas with a pre-written campaign, you can't. There are no vampires in Amusil. <laughs> there, are no, there are no vampires in Amusil. <laughs> there is no war in Bossing Say. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it can come at a disadvantage at times to have to make a character, and maybe you have to change up or abandon certain things in your backstory to make them fit into this more confined yeah. world in order to make them make sense. and You have to work inside the box, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you do. But at the same time, everyone else also has to, so it's a more balanced experience. <laughs> true, true. There's not going to be one guy who's like, I can't be killed by any means whatsoever. <laughs> and the DM and all everyone the players are the table screaming. Just, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's in my backstory. I'm actually cannot be. I cannot die uh, until I complete a quest for my long lost love. Okay, what's the quest? I have to pay her five silver pieces. <laughs> okay, you gonna do that? No. <laughs> no. See, every t it's weird. Every time I have silver specific, it has to be silver specifically. I have gold, but I don't have any silver. Every time I see her, I don't have any silver. But any time I don't see her, oh, there's my silver. I found it. Yeah. <laughs> It was in this pocket of my backpack. Dang! <laughs> what do you mean? I just gave you, like, 50 silver. Oh, I converted it to gold, actually. So. <laughs> in my inventory. So. I gave you 55 silver. That was um, 5 gold oh. and 1 electrum, actually. So... <laughs> I, know P I know players that do this. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but, yeah. Move also, on. there's an ex expectation from the player's side that if you're playing in a pre-written game that the DM is not going to throw weird, wacky rules at you. Mm -hmm. Like, homebrew rules. They're probably going to play by the book. Yeah. And, like, uh, like, for my game specifically, I didn't have this problem because I was playing with you guys, who I had already played with, you know, over a year in a homebrew game. So you guys were already accustomed to open to homebrew rules that you gave it to us, where I wanted to try out my crit rules. Which I still love, and I still run if I do run anything. Whenever I run one shots or anything like that, I still run those crit rules. And I mean, my players know them now. They are more comfortable with my crit rules, and they like them. And luckily, I had you guys. You guys were open to my crit rules for my pre written campaign. But if I had a different party, it could have been a lot less likely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially because some rules, like my crit rules, make it easier for the players because they are more likely to crit than the DM is, just because of action economy. Action economy. Um, they have, they roll more, so they have more chances to crit. Therefore, their crits will be better more often. Whereas you know me rolling as the enemies, they crit less often. So because they roll less often, so it's it kind of is in the player advantage. But there are also homebrew rules, like I know some rules that you have been. 
that you run with that are in the DM's advantage, right? Like, like the DM gets the upper hand in this sense. And players might be a lot less accepting of those kind of rules with the pre-written campaign. I have a, I have a couple rules that go either way, I think. Yeah. Depending on how it's used. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of which rule you're thinking of. <laughs> that gives me an advantage. <laughs> I'm not going to tell I, you. I can't think of it. I'm not going to tell you. Well, that's dumb. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously a rule that I play by. <laughs> Just trying to think of what it would be. I think we have one more big uh, pro and con for each of these. Yeah, we do. Um... <laughs> <sighs> this one is more so a 5e D&D specific problem slash pro. It's a pro Anacon. Um, the the existence of Adventures League. <laughs> Adventures League is a great resource for new players or people who don't really have like a group that plays all the time. An right? amazing I've said resource. this. Yeah, I've said this before. However... <laughs> Some of the people that play Adventures League are not those people. Some of the people that play Adventures League uh, play Adventures League because they care more so about the rules aspect than anything else. And there's a lot more rules in Adventures League. Remember when I said that people might not accept your homebrew rules? These are the people. (laughs) Yeah. So, on one hand... Adventures League, great. Some of those players, when they play in a homebrew game, they're like, yeah, I'm really knowledgeable about the rules, and I'd be happy to tell you about them, if you ask. Hey, those that's me! Are great. That's yeah. me! I'm yeah. that guy! Those people are great. And then there's some people who, when the DM says something, they're like, actually, you're wrong. And it's like, <laughs> what? I will like, admit, I have also table. been that guy. <laughs> yeah. But, like, to be fair, the entire rest of the table agreed with me. <laughs> Yeah, that one. That one was like a that one instance where I was just like straight up. I was like, "You're just wrong." Like, please. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly the thing. It's like you have to kind of be prepared for those people, um, because when you're playing in a game that's more pre-written, you might have people that, like I said, expect you to play by the rules that see it more like an RPG or more like a like a numbers-based mm-hmm. hack-and-slash than a role-playing game. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, if you ask me, I think you could split up Adventures League into two categories, really. Like, the players in general, right? You have you have the people who are inexperienced and the people who are experienced. And it's yeah. just that simple. The people that are experienced, nothing against them, but they're a lot, le- a lot more likely to be that kind of player, where um, they're very knowledgeable at the rules, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I am a person myself that is very knowledgeable about the rules. I like being knowledgeable about the rules because it is helpful for the table when there are discussions about what is the correct and incorrect say on a rule. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes Ben will look at me and he will just let me be the deciding factor. And whatever I say at that point in time, he knows that I'm not going to say it with a biased opinion of, of I want our party to be better or whatnot. He knows that I'll I'll just give him the straight up, you know, like I'm pretty sure this is what the book says. So that way we have to we don't have to waste time opening three different books because we don't remember what book it's from to try and find the one rule. And we're like searching the table of contents to try and figure out which category, which which section of the book it might be in where it says this one like two sentence rule that we're looking for. And he just accepts that and he goes, okay, that's cool. We'll run that like that from now on. Or maybe it's it's in his favor, so okay, cool. We'll run that from now on. Who cares, right? Like we're all here to play, play the game, and that there's nothing wrong with that, with knowing rules for that reason. But there kind of is a problem where, like Ben said, the people that are there just to try and get their two cents in every second that anyone does anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a proper way to do it and a non improper way to do it. Where, you know, you could wait till, like, after they're done with their turn and you say, I think next time, this could, it could slide by this time, but next time, keep in mind this option for your character to do this during your turn, maybe. Or something like that. And you can have, like, that discussion one-on-one with a player that messed up a rule or whatever. 
as another player that is a rules lawyer, quote unquote, or, you know, you could be the one that interrupts the table and takes up more time during combat and et cetera, et cetera. Or, you know, even worse, interrupts RP, like in the middle of two characters RPing, you know, like actually that your aura paladin does this instead or whatever, like who cares? <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? I've, I've actually played with people like at free written games who are like, all right, I guess we'll pretend to role play. It's like, you can do whatever. <laughs> I'm going to do me. A role playing game. Yeah. RPG. Or, like, at one point I was like, I'm running low on arrows. And he was like, you keep track of arrows. I was like, <laughs> I was like, do you not? How many arrows have you shot this game again? Like 500? What the? I mean, <laughs> I used to keep track of arrows, and then I bought. This was my 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 best. I think my best economic decision in D and D. I actually can't say that because I made a business where I already had the upper hand based on my location. But but my my rogue who used a short bow, I just bought like hundreds of arrows that broke instantly once I shot them, and I never had to keep track of my arrows again because if I shot, I lost an arrow. It was that simple. I never had the idea of, like, did I collect arrows after this fight? I can't remember how many of them would have survived me shooting them. Because sometimes, you know, you hit a stone with an arrow, it's more likely to break than if you hit, like, wood or flesh. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. And so I'm, like, I'm like trying to piece together, like, did my arrow break or not? I'm, like, guaranteed that arrow is gone. <laughs> yeah. That There's same a bunch guy, of though, arrowheads on the ground. Like, who cares? That same guy, though, was kind of a nightmare because he was like, yeah, I don't keep track of spell slots either. And I was like, I had a heart attack on the like, spot. How? I was like, oh, God. How? 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 Do you just, like, always cast 5th level spells when you're, like, a 10th level character? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yep. He's warlocking it. <laughs> <laughs> He's straight up warlocking it, man. He's like, I know I'm a blank, but uh, really I'm a warlock. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be prepared for people of both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, but then, but yeah, so like, there's two options of Adventure League players, and then there's new players who know nothing about the rules. They're just trying to get into the game. They're trying to enjoy themselves. You know, they're you know they don't have a group, so maybe they're just like hopping around into different games. They want a character that can hop around into different games and fit into every setting, which is what Adventures League is literally made for, right? Like that's the whole idea of Adventures League is that. DMs are supposed to run it in this setting, and so that way mm -hmm. players can can come in and out as they feel like it. Yeah, and all those extra rules are actually because players can drop in and out of games. If you can take a character exactly. who's level three, go to a different table that's in the same campaign or whatever, and with all this five XP level, three, level, so it's yeah, this much to like, next one. Yeah, I'm, I would join this game. Yeah, and and, and actually, that's the whole point of the game. Of Adventures League is so that players can come in and out to try and meet new people to maybe have a more consistent game. Mm -hmm. We went on and on about pre-writtens, man. I we think we did. pretty much covered everything in the book. Has has the bush been beaten? <clears throat> did, did we beat the bush? Did we beat it to a pulp? My pun went unappreciated. That's okay. I mean, I, I heard it too, <laughs> but then I made a joke and we're just vicious out here we're two comedians not <laughs> not not willing to give the other one the upper hand <laughs> yeah i guess we'll just have to write our own book of jokes homebrew it if you will you really put me on the spot to think of another joke there <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways homebrew <laughs> jake homebrew time. traveler jake the segway king um <laughs> yeah if all of that sounds like the perfect game, like you're okay with everyone showing up and doing their thing and being in all this cool pre-written lore and everyone's on the same page when you show up, that's fantastic. But if you want something more, something <laughs> a bit more chaotic at times... I knew you were going to say something more. <laughs> a bit more chaotic, I will admit. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, but... <laughs> has the potential to be so much more than you could ever imagine. Welcome to the whole world of homebrew. So, every... Here's the thing about homebrew. Every DM who, like, takes the time to make their own campaign or their own world is putting a lot of work into it. And that takes a lot of time, generally speaking. 
Yes. Unless you just improvise everything, in which case I guess you don't have to prep at all. Hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> How you doing? But that goes both ways anyway, so. Yeah. But it does take a lot of time, and the DM is going to take a lot of time to make this huge, creatively inspired world full of references, full of lore, full of places and people for you to meet. And it also takes a little bit more time on your end because you have to sit down and talk with the DM. You have to be willing to work with him to build your character up so that you fit into the story he's trying to tell and into the world that he's created. Yes. But um, with that quote-unquote con of the more time-consumingness that this campaign is, I think leads with two much bigger pros, in my opinion. Um, because you're spending all this time building the world and whatnot, and, and you are doing it, that means that you, the DM, are going to be a lot more passionate about the setting and the quests and campaign overall. And you're going to like it more, right? You're going to enjoy it more because at the end of the day, you know, you're getting to see the fruit of all of your hard work there at the table. So you're in a better mood at the table. The players are having more fun. You're, you know, you're reacting to the players, enjoying it, and you're having more fun now, right? Yeah. And the campaign is more interesting. There's more stuff to poke at, right? There's more buttons to press that the players have no idea what the button does mm -hmm. or, you know gems or whatnot and encrusted in the walls that could may or may not just pretty much kill most any player but except for that one apparently um i don't know what i could possibly talk be talking about right now but you know there's uh, players and dms alike are going to be a lot more passionate about the game and also there's a whole new world that the players have not even dipped their toes into yet right they know nothing about this place yeah. and it's fun to be able to interact with that and poke at things as a player standpoint with everything in the entire world you know mm -hmm. like whole races can be totally different in a homebrew setting than they normally are like like the race as a general can have a whole new lore you know yeah and also you could have a huge impact on the world that you're playing in. Yeah, right? depending you, on like you, how early the world is. Yeah, and if you're lucky enough to have a game go on for a long and long, long and long time, um, I'll just say a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> it feels longer when you're a DM. Shut up. <laughs> That's fair. Um, your players can have a huge impact, and like they can have multiple generations of characters that exist in your in your world. Um, entire cities, countries could be entirely built around the war that they developed. You know, like like in Ben's case, you can have a certain player that literally has a family tree of different people in it, where like five to ten percent of it is player characters. Like, and there's like actually five generations in there. Cough, cough. That's that that is a thing in Ben's world. There is a family tree in Ben's world that is very large. Well, so he started <laughs> he started That's with insane. a player character and then married an NPC which expanded into that NPC's family line which expanded into a huge other family line and then which expanded into like a thing they don't even know about through marriage and then his other family tree like he mapped it out and was like all of these other characters that he's planning <laughs> on playing in the future are mm -hmm. all descended from the other side it's like yeah that's yeah it's insane <laughs> it's insane uh, it's it's great it's the kind of things you get when you it's have like players cool. that are super it's into super it cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing is your dm can let you do all these things right Mm -hmm. downside your dm might also not let you do those things True. your dm might write a campaign and be like it's this way and it will never be any other way i've yeah. even heard of dms handing out pre-written character sheets and being like these are the characters i need filled in this game <laughs> i'd like to say it right now i am not for that <laughs> well you are because you've asked me to do that before remember Oh, well, oh, yeah, that is one of my... Okay, but that's for a one-shot. That's different. Yeah. 
I've only suggested it as a one shot. I don't think you should just give characters for campaigns. That doesn't <laughs> that doesn't check out. But I have heard people doing that. That's fair. Hey, and if everyone at the table enjoys that, more power to them, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but, you do that. You go. You know. Yeah. It, you have to be willing to accept that all the players are not going to agree that your story is the best all the time. Like, they have characters they want to they wanna embrace, and they're like, True. Yeah, yeah, I want to play his character. I don't want to play Gork Schnorp the... <laughs> The Triton, oh, the Triton Sorcerer. No, I, I don't want to. You play have that. to make this character now, Ben. You have Gork to Snorp? make Gork Snorp. <laughs> he's not going to be a Triton though. He's going to be a. Uh, Gork Snorp. He's going to be a Kutoa. Kotoa. Kutoa. Yeah, he's going to be a Kutoa. <laughs> he's going to be Gork Snorp. Oh, Kutoa is so funny looking. Anyways, oh, yeah. <laughs> but but it's so much easier to make Gork Snorp in a homebrew game than it is for. A pre-written, right? Like, Gork Snorp can be incorporated into the Kuatoan race, and mm-hmm. he can have, especially if you're playing something as exotic as a Kuatoan, you could, you know, Gork Snorp could be like the prodigy child of the entire race of people, the entire civilization of the main, like, homeland of the Kuatoans for all I care about, right? <laughs> like, wh- how many other characters are going to come from the Kuatoans? Sure, make this guy the prince or something. I don't care. Like if he wants to do that, let him let them do that. Like who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the great thing about homebrew. Like you could just be like, I want to play Gork Snorp one day, and everyone's, everyone's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, you could get more exotic with your creations, and you could do. You have a lot more options to go with yeah. your characters, and it's for the DM standpoint, it's a lot easier to incorporate them into the world. Like I talked about before, you can really mold their character in. As if it's a lump of clay. You know? Yeah. And you also have the option of introducing, without necessarily breaking continuity or whatever, homebrew stuff. Cool yes. stuff. Yes. That you find online that people make or that you make yourself. It's a lot easier to see Quack Thulu <laughs> <laughs> break into your world and have a whole new side quest for your Halloween special or something. I don't know. And it's a lot more feasible for a thing like that to happen in a homebrew world than, you know, a pre-written because there's all of these characters that technically have this kind of personality traits and should react to things in this way. And all of a sudden, redacted, there's error 404, there's nothing there to say how Hank the barkeep knows how to react to Quack Thulu busting through his bar. Like, uh-huh. like it's just not there. Like... Maybe Hank the Barkeep has a uh, has an old rivalry with Quack Thulu. You don't know. Maybe who knows? You do. <laughs> You're the DM in your homebrew world. You can write that in. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. And you know what? There's also nothing wrong with just being like, I really just want to run a game in this world that already exists and just making it that way. That's mm-hmm. totally cool. Yeah. Like, you could do that. I've you run a game run, in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, you could run a homebrew game in a pre-written world if you would like. That is also cool. That's yeah. kind of the best of both worlds, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. On the, the other hand, one thing that can become a real problem with homebrew is what to do session to session. Mm-hmm. Because in a pre-written game, you have it written down exactly what needs to get done. You have a timeline. Yeah. Whereas in the homebrew game, it's like, that can get a little muddled. Yeah. The Especially lines are definitely when you're good. confusing, like our, our people are. <laughs> you trying to say something, Ben? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, Ben. Is that okay? Yeah. The uh, timeline I mean, is definitely muddled. <laughs> the timeline is definitely muddled. We have no idea what's going on in that aspect. I remember for a while you were trying to be like, but the, the timeline doesn't allow for that. I was like, the timeline has not mattered for a while. <laughs> I'm like, how does this make any sense? How is your character this old in this time when they meet this other character and now different amounts of time have happened for each character? What? <laughs> like, I don't get this. Uh, so yeah. dumb. So funny. But so Not funny. the point. <laughs> Not the point. <laughs> um, yeah, timelines get a little weird, but n- not 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 the point. Not well, 
at the at the end of the day, the game is more sandboxy in general, right? Like mm. it's it's more of a a pool of water that you get to splash around and play in, rather than the train tracks. Yeah, you just gotta keep in mind it's like session to session, you might run out of ideas. Yes. You might get hit with writer's block, which is a horrible thing to happen. Um, I'm friends with a lot of writers, and all of them are like, writer's block is the most cursed thing. Mm-hmm. And if I even mention it, they're like, how could you say that? How could you bring <laughs> that up? Don't speak its name. Are you? What are you, a fool? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're like, you've cursed me. <laughs> <laughs> We're doomed, you fool. <laughs> Um, and you just kind of have to be prepared, you know, maybe plan a couple side quests or write down like a general idea of what you want to happen. That way you never get too off track. Um, and that's another thing you can get totally off track. Like, oh yeah, you could just run in a game. You could just be like, there's Big a Titan time. now. Big t- <laughs> There's a Titan now. Whoopsies. <laughs> Let's figure that out now. Where's it going to take us? The Underdark? I don't know. What the yeah, that hell? Was a, that was a great arc. I like that. That <laughs> was a great arc, but I'm still annoyed that it ever happened. <laughs> it should never have happened. Yeah. It doesn't make any and sense. Another thing is, sometimes <laughs> you can have something very simple, or you could have something extremely hard. It doesn't matter. Your players might just cheese it or might just screw it up entirely. <laughs> because in a homebrew setting, there's more than one way to figure things out. It's not just one solution sometimes, necessarily, right? You know, you know, sometimes you spend a lot of time debating and balancing a lich to to have like, well, should this stat block have this kind of thing? What kind of spells is he prepared for? What kind of stuff is he doing? And then sometimes, you know, you spend hours and hours balancing the HP, AC, and abilities that a certain lich might have. And then sometimes, just sometimes, a crazy doctor might tackle him into a lava pit. And all of that's down the drain. But that's okay, because it creates one hell of a story. You know? Yeah. But you just have to grow to accept that slowly but surely if you run mm-hmm. a homebrew game. It's a lot more feasible for that kind of stuff to happen, especially if you allow homebrew content in your world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just kind of be prepared. Because when you're, when you're running a pre-written campaign, you didn't necessarily write all that stuff. Yeah. In a homebrew, you wrote all that stuff. And when your players just completely bypass it and leave it in the dust and you'll never to be seen again, that can be really heartbreaking. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you were just trying to have it easy by doing a pre-written in the middle of a homebrew game, and then all of a sudden someone teleports Strahd's uh, spellbook off of the map, and he doesn't have that anymore, and he has to deal with that. Yeah, I thought that was great, actually. That was I'm not a pretty even mad good about move. that. But, just, I was just, I'm just thinking of times that we've, like, cheesed things. Like, like Well, here's that, the thing. That fight make... would have been so much harder with that spellbook. Oh, boy. You guys have cheesed a lot of stuff. <laughs> we got, we have cheesed a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a whole background thing that one of my characters was doing was just building up the ability to cheese the biggest of fights. Like That's true. <laughs> I was just like in the back burner, like looking for certain items. I was like, if I could get all yeah. of if I could get all of the stones, I can Thanos snap this mofo. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you about the stones? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... But yeah, it's... The beautiful thing about homebrew is it, it can be anything you want. You can build it up to be anything. Your players help create the story as much as you help create the story. Yes. Um, which and is, which is so if much you're fun. willing... If you're willing to put in that extra work, it could be very, very rewarding. More rewarding, yeah. Um, but Just at the same time... Prerequisite, you kind of have to have a consistent group to really do that. True. Um, if you don't have that, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's I... a lot harder for you to come back from a big gap of playing at a homebrew game than it is for a pre written game. Because then, you know, a lot of people are all of a sudden unused to playing their characters. Um, they don't remember exactly how they, you know, exist RP wise, maybe. Or, you know, maybe they don't have, like, their voice down anymore if they do a character voice. And it's a lot harder to remember, like, what the hell were we even doing? 
Like, what are we, like, trying to do right now? And it's a lot harder to remember that in a pre-written game or in a in a homebrew game, whereas in a pre-written game, you could just, like, read the past, like, three pages and you're like, oh, this is what you guys are doing. You could just, like, skim them as the DM and you're like, oh, you just took out this dungeon and you were talking to this guy and then this happened. And then everyone goes, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah, it's it's important to take notes regardless, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, the, with the pre-written, the notes are already there. You know, the DM doesn't have True. to really do much True. unless you kill an important NPC or something, and they're like, Ooh. Yee. <laughs> Yikers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, there's a lot of pros and cons to either. Um, mm. I think most notably, I've experienced both when the party decided... We're going to go kill Strahd right in the middle of a <laughs> stupid game that I was running. That I'm still running. And I was like... Was like you were setting up for a cool thing to happen, and then, boom, one of our characters was stuck in <laughs> Curse of Strahd. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did that for, like, literally the next three months. <laughs> Yeah. And we have and now it's it just doesn't make sense for the same things that we were to be able to do back then to be able to do now. So literally all of that into the garbage. Because time passes on in D and D. I still feel so bad for that, but it wasn't at all my fault, but I still feel so bad for that. <laughs> it was just no. like The two people involved are not here today. Why did you banish him? Why did you banish him? <laughs> Of all spells that you could have cast. You for, for context, we had a character that was from Barovia. They I mean, we've talked Barovia. about this on yeah. the podcast already. But maybe maybe this is their first episode. I don't know. That's true. Uh, or they need a reminder. Uh, he was from Barovia, and our, our cleric banished him back to Barovia. I mean, you're he, in Barovia, he banished you can't him leave. and and concentrated him on it for a full minute. And it was yeah. during, like, a party, so it's not feasible for him to, like, have anything to have broken his concentration. Well, even if he didn't concentrate on it for a full minute, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, because it's Barovia in general, and Strahd yeah, would be like, leave. Oh, the one that escaped? Finally you're back? Sounds like you're never leaving. Exactly. I let you slip one time, you're not getting out again. Yeah. So, literally, in the middle of a homebrew game, like, with all this homebrew stuff, and all these homebrew, like characters or the homebrew class even being thrown in there and ben is literally setting us up for a cool new side quest that we're about to do we're like at a party where we're talking like our party is finally like big news we're 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 big news in town you know people know us and and people want to hire us for certain quests and then we're gone for weeks (laughs) yeah exactly uh and then but then literally right in the middle with all this homebrew stuff they went and decided they were going to go fight, kill Strahd. They didn't, they I mean, didn't, we didn't save their party member. We didn't but, decide it. We, yeah. well, you it could have kind just of left him for apart. dead. One person, we could have left him for dead, but that's like kind of messed up for like <laughs> the one player that gets left for dead. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that blows. It's happened before. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was very interesting because I got to see what happens when you take all these characters that are used to homebrew and throw them into a pre-written game. And of course I had to read Strahd in like a week, so that was cool. <laughs> um, I still remember that session. It was only like a two-hour session because it happened early-ish in the session. And then it happened and you were just like, not going to lie, guys. I think they have to call it for that. I think that's the end because now I gotta read Strahd, and we were like, <laughs> "Sounds good, man. You do that." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> Yakers!" <laughs> oh boy. And to be honest, they it was a really good fight with Strahd. It was a really. They good just fight. came in and they were like, "Hmm, we have all this cool homebrew stuff," and everyone in Vologi was just like. What are you doing here? <laughs> like, who are you and why are you so happy to be here? And everyone's <laughs> like, we're just feeling good. And they're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> we're supposed to be a happy town and you're weird. 
Oh, it was great. But my point being, pre-written and homebrew don't have to be mutually exclusive, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a homebrew world that now has the entire map of Barovia planted in a desert. <laughs> right smack dab in the center of it or whatever. Yep. Wherever it is. That's just yep. a place now <laughs> that exists. <laughs> that we still go back to. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> and also, when you're running a game like Curse of Strahd or Birth of the Apocalypse or any of those pre-written games, sprinkle in some homebrew, man. Make it just a little bit spicy. True. Sure. You could always go on a side quest. Yeah, just, always. Just, just salt bay some homebrew. It doesn't there, have you know? to be much. Like it doesn't. Like if you really think about it, you can make it. You could keep it very close to the book, and you don't have to think about too much. If you're really scared about like your creative control over the game, or or like your creative capabilities as a DM, you know, maybe you're self conscious about that or something. I don't know, but you know. It doesn't have to be too much. You could always just like write in a little thing that they could do or they could not, and who cares? Congratulations, you get a little taste of what it's like to be a homebrew DM because they ignored your side quest. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. So that's that's our Traveler's official Traveler Jake and Traveler Ben stamp of approval on pros and cons for, for homebrew and pre-written campaigns. Um, yeah. Anything else to say on that matter? Honestly, if you have a group and you guys are having fun, it doesn't matter what you guys are playing. True. As long as you and your friends are having fun. That is the important thing. Never forget that. Oh, yeah. And if one guy is making it not fun, it might be that guy that's just not fun. Maybe. <laughs> it happens. It sucks to see it, but it happens. Yeah. People, I'm sure... people play the game differently. Yeah. It's 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 like a general rule of D and D. If one person doesn't fit in, eh, maybe that person should find a group they fit more. Yeah, in. yeah, and that doesn't not, mean you're not like, friends. It just yeah. means maybe you don't play D and D. It's not a bad thing to be that person. Like that just means that you play differently than other people, and you just need to find another group. That's yep. that's all. That's all it is. Yep. But yeah, so um, if you guys didn't know. You can find us on a lot of different platforms. I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as possible, just because I feel like <laughs> a mouthful sometimes. But we upload all of our episodes onto YouTube every week, uh, just at the same time as they go up on other places like Spotify and whatnot. Um, you can find us on YouTube at Travelers Tips and Tales. You can find us on Instagram. Sometimes we post memes, sometimes we don't. At Travelers Tips and Tales, we can, we have a Facebook page, that's Travelers Tips and Tales. We have a Twitter, which is at Tips Tales. We have a Tumblr, which is at Travelers Tips and Tales. Patreon, which is at Travelers Tips and Tales. You can find a whole bunch of homebrew stuff that Ben here works hard on sometimes. Sometimes he does it. It doesn't matter. He does a lot for us, so we don't really pressure him that much but you can go to patreon you get early episodes and other things too at travelers tips and tales we you can email us any questions you have about us or or D &D in general i'm a rules lawyer i'd love to answer them um you can email us at travelers tips and tales at gmail.com uh we also have a website if you want a little taste of what our patreon might be like before you sign up for it that's totally cool we understand that that's at travelers tips and tales.com also <clears throat> Shout out to Dalton and Ben's mom for being our patrons, our, our, our top tier patrons, uh, enough to really get shouted out. We appreciate them and what they do for our podcast. And yeah. And also, if you guys didn't know, you guys should all go out and check out your local game stores. There's a lot of different game stores near you, most likely. I'm just assuming this. I don't know where you live. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But I bet they're there because they're all over the place. The four in particular that I would like to shout out today are Forgotten Path Games in Vacaville. That is where um, Ben, Michael, and I all met first the fir for the first time when we played Adventures League, technically. Um, there's uh, Mad, Alpaca, Mad Alpaca Games in Fairfield, Davis Cards and Games in Davis, and Hobby Badger Games in West Sacramento. Me and Michael and I think Ben have been to most all if not most of these places and we have tested them out and we give our stamp travelers stamp of approval they got cool board games and D, &D stuff and and warhammer stuff and they got minis and they got paints and they got all sorts of stuff you guys should check them out they're really cool and they're also cool people to talk to and it's also nice to support them but yeah a lot of uh cool places and you know if you're not in the greater sacramento area you can check out other places near you i bet they're there I promise you. 
They're most likely around. You just need to look around and dig a little to find it. <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, that pretty much covers everything. I don't, I don't know how many things to add to that. <laughs> that was some that was some word vomit. I just I just plowed through that. <laughs> Sorry if any of that was uh, ineligible and you couldn't understand what the hell I was saying. <laughs> But on the bright side, I think it was maybe one of our fastest intros yet. Yeah. Intros? Or outros. <clears throat> uh, adventure awaits! <laughs>